I've been a foster parent for almost three years now. Getting to know foster kids and foster youths, um, you realize that these kids come from different backgrounds and they need to be cared cared for and loved. It's, it's not like uh, getting a stranger in your home and you think that everything's gonna be hunky-dory. It's not, it's not like that at all. So you have to learn to love and to nurture them and to motivate them. My name is Penny Kumta and I'm a supervisor here at the Teen Center. So the process of being a foster child is um, that somebody is worried about a kid and they call our hotline and they say that this kid's being abused or neglected and that somebody should go out and see what's going on. So um, the stages that we work with are really long after all that stuff has happened. Um, so once the court has decided that it's not safe for a young person to go back home, then they come to our center and we work with them until they get adopted or they become a guardian child or they leave foster care because they kind of grew up out of it. And I'm a child welfare worker for the city and county of San Francisco. I primarily work with teenagers. I try to help them uh, connect with services that I think will benefit them. I try to put them in schools that they feel comfortable. Uh, one of the most important things I try to do for teenagers is place them in a uh, maintain or place them in a home that they feel comfortable in, that they'll feel loved and nurtured, and they'll get the respect that they need, and they'll have someone that'll have their back until they're 18 and hopefully beyond. And one of the other important things I try to do is uh, reconnect them with their family members. The piece I think that's the most important in having a young person grow up in a positive environment is having somebody that cares about them, and not just cares about them like, okay, are you alive, did you eat, did you go to school today, but really sits down and talks to them one-on-one um, -on -one about what's happening in their life, about their dreams, about their aspirations, about their goals, about just life in general. One of the, the first things I do when I, when I meet my kids is I try, to, um, I try to connect with them on another level. I try to connect it with them so that they'll feel comfortable with me and I try to ask them what they need and I try to provide those things for them. I think that there are definitely deficiencies in the needs of our young people and what programs are available. Um, I think that there are tons of programs that are great that are out there and I think that um, not all the young people get connected to them, may not know about them, sometimes the workers don't know about them, sometimes you know they've heard some funky stuff about a program and they're like, nah, I don't want to go there, it might be on the other side of town or it might be in like kind of a ghetto neighborhood. Um, but I think that the programs could always be better. I think that the biggest piece about programs that could be better is that there be um, a lower ratio, that it's really one person working with one young person. I got into foster care when I was 15 um, because of a family incident with a sibling. And for other people, I've noticed that I've talked to say that they never hear about the opportunities that I, I'm having right now. They say they never hear about it. So the suggestion to get those opportunities would be that somebody needs to to get out and rally people up and tell them about these opportunities early, like either right when they get into foster care or a few months after they get into foster care, but not when they turn like 20 or 21 because that's just too late. I am Jennifer Daly. Um, I work as an attorney in San Francisco. I represent children um, in abuse and neglect cases as well as parents. I think that um, I'd like to see more consistency in the people who are involved in the children's lives. I find it hard when there's a lot of social workers that come in and out. The children, it's, they build relationships and then they have a lot of people leave their lives and I think that's really difficult. You, you gotta have stability first for a young person. Um, they gotta have, they gotta be in a home where they trust and they and they love their their caretaker, and and that they feel like they're loved and trusted. Um, because without that or a stable environment, a kid can't graduate high school. A kid can't go to college. A kid can't learn how to how to trust someone. You know, I think that's one of the most important things is a stable environment where um, they have a person they can trust. And my first stay at a group home were, were cool because the lady that owned it, her husband was a, um, 
a minister, so I always went to church, and it was always fun because I was in the youth group, and we always went places, and even at the house, we always did activities with other girls, and they were nice. Once your children will go into a home that is a lot um, stricter than they're used to, I mean, it's a really big adjustment, uh, but I think there's a lot of agencies that work with the foster homes to try to have it be a balanced home, not too strict and not too loose. That doesn't mean that it always turns out that way. Yeah, I'm pretty loose. Um, I drive young people in my own car. I don't have any qualms about that. Um, I talk to them about my life and what they might want to know. Some things I think are personal and I try not to say too much about that. If I'm not comfortable, I'll just say so. Um, but, you know, I'm pretty open. I think one of the biggest things most some social workers do that that um, that I, I think I, I disagree with is that um, they want to be their clients' friends, you know, and uh, they want to be their, their you know their, their teenagers, their clients, or whoever's friends. But I think you know teenagers have enough friends and they need adults in their life. And I try to be an adult and I try to speak to them as an adult. I try to treat them adult, as adult. So I'm I'm friendly and I go in between and um, I'm not. I don't think I'm that strict. I usually check in with each foster parent to kind of see what their boundaries and rules are. I'm very strict about school. Um, boundaries in terms of curfews. I expect you to be in at a certain time, depending on your age. Every kid that has been in my home, I've had like six kids at one time, and I basically play it according to each individual and what their needs are. Um, my name is Joe, and, and I'm 16 years old. I got into foster care when I was 13 years old, and when I got into foster care, so I was abused a lot. The obstacles I go through is every time my foster mom would get a kid in the house, it would be a girl every time. And she got a guy one time, but like the guy didn't stay a long time, but and every time the foster care would give her another kid, it would always be a girl and that's one of the obstacles that I go through. Of the stereotypes that people put on foster kids about the percentages of this and that who don't finish this or that and the percentages of this and that who go to like prison or be homeless and things like that. So it's tough getting over those stereotypes, trying to make people see that I'm, I don't fall into it or that other people I know don't fall into it. Not everyone will fail if you're in the foster care system. So that's a big struggle. The opportunities given to me as a foster care youth or when I was a foster care youth, um, there were a lot of them, such as at City College, there's the Guardian Scholars. They're basically for foster care um, students there. I get help from the African American Scholastic Program at City College, which helps me with like um, transferring to a university after my two years there. For housing, I work with the Independent Living Schools Program, uh, also known as ILSP. I have a case manager there that um, helped me get into a housing place with the Salvation Army. It helps me to get to a place so I can make a difference in myself and so I can succeed in my goals that I'm trying to get to. I would get a diploma and graduate from high school. In 10 years, I see myself probably joining the Marines. I think it's a good system um, that's put in place. Um, I think that um, for a lot of foster youths that have morals, values, and principles, it works for them.